welcome to today's book exploration. We are talking today about the book of wizard craft in which the apprentice finds spells, potions, fantastic tales, and 50 enchanting things to make. Illustrated by Lindy Burnett. So this originally had a dust cover on it, but I bought this when I was probably seven or eight years old and I'm 32 at the time of filming this video. So the dust cover has long been folded up and it's lost to time. But we still do have the cover itself and I do love that they have the gold sort of textured printing on the cover, but this did have a very beautiful dust cover with Lindy uh, Burnett's illustrations on it. And you'll see those throughout the book as well. Let's get started. I do really love the color palette of this book, how it evokes these very Halloween colors uh, in a very specific saturation and the weathering just of these pages at the beginning is so nice. It reminds me of really good scrapbooking paper. So here we have our cover page and again it kind of lays out already like a sketchbook some color palettes for you. So this book is treated as if you are an apprentice to a great wizard and they have given you some of the basics. So the table of contents covers things from what wizards wear, to magical creatures, to the art of amusement, and more. This is probably one of my favorite pictures in the book, and it's the foreword by the wizard, and leaving a little kind of snapshot of the wizard at his computer working on this as well. So trying to get all of his knowledge together, all of his legacy to pass on to his apprentice. So the first chapter goes into what wizards wear. Uh, it said that the clothes make the man or woman and that definitely includes wizards. Here are my notes on how to make some of my favorite robes, hats, slippers, and special adornments. And I actually used some of these instructions for my Halloween costumes in the past as a kid. I always really was drawn to this image of the full robes. This was before Harry Potter came out and the idea of wearing uh, especially for the movies, like a, a uniform underneath split robes was a thing. So whenever I imagined wizards, I would think of this very full robe that covers everything, like a dress. And then you have the little kid seamstresses over here helping. And these are also some of the jewelry pieces they teach you how to make as well. So of course, what's a wizard without their hat? I did make a version of this hat as a kid and it's super easy. They give you all of the instructions that you need, all the measurements, all of the materials, and the illustrations on how to do the steps are so simple yet beautiful. I love this little snake. And this is the wizard's robe, which I did make. I made an orange wizard robe and it had uh, gold glitter symbols and stars and stuff all over it. And we ended up using um, the sewing tape instead of actually sewing it for all the seams. And it worked for a little while until I got way too hot trick-or-treating in Florida uh, with a bunch of layers on. So I had to change until I pretty much just had this and my hat. And then I was a lot cooler for the rest of trick-or-treating. So just like before, very simple illustrations to show the process. The little hourglass pendant has an excellent way of how to use cording to make your own little timer pendant. And again, just the beautiful light of this picture emanating from this is gorgeous. I did make a wand with dragon heartstring as a kid as well. So this shows what you need. You can use a uh, brass or copper wire for all of your little spirals. And having the correct length uh, rod that you're going to use with it. And this is just a little foam ball that you can color how you like. So customizing your own wand. We also have a sorceress wand here. So this one looks more like a maypole. It has all of these ribbons coming off of it. And again, we get a little bit of info about great wizards throughout history that our mentor wizard knows of. 
This amulet I did make back in the day as well. So we used some clay and I carved out my scarab beetle and some symbols, punched holes in it, and you have yourself a sturdy little amulet. This one I never made, but I really wanted to. The now you see me, now you don't cloak. So again, uh, the invisibility cloak of the Harry Potter world was not yet ubiquitous. So we have this kind of cloak style here, and then we have the suggested symbols. So we have snakes here for your stealthiness and sneakiness when you're sneaking around in the cloak. I did make myself some fingerless gloves. I loved a pair of fingerless gloves. They make you feel so magical. This one, they're very smartly using it to get their cat down, maybe to avoid some scratches there, but a very simple DIY that can just feel a little more magical. We also have wizard staffs. So how would you like your staff to look? This one is the Anubis headed one. And for this one, we have something that's a little bit more colorful. So they called that one the jeweled orb. And they give you all the patterns that you would need to make either one. And I did make myself a broom. So I took our old broom and cut it at an angle and painted it up and decorated. So it's now your high speed chase broom if you wanna put some flames on there. The sorcerer slipovers are also really cute. So these are inspired by Hermes, the Greek god of traveling and all people who travel. So have your little wings next to your feet to fly. This was another one that I tried to make. I wasn't super successful at it, but you are making your own magic ring. And in this case, you're again using brass or copper wire and just any kind of large glass marble, or you can use a flat marble jewel to wrap your own ring. Then we get into the decorative arts. This is what I wanted my room to look like as a kid. I wanted to have, you know, all of the cobblestone or rocky appearance like I was in a wizard tower and they're going to show you how to make a lot of the things we see in here. The floating magic candle is also great for Halloween parties or any time you want a spooky setting. Also love the illustrations, how this is all darkened and you just have that little light coming from here. On this one, we get some more info about snakes and serpents of the sky. So into constellations and a nice little crossbones board. So you can have a little chalkboard for your wizard layer. Here we have some bats and stars to hang from the ceiling. And you'll notice we have our hat that you may have made earlier. And then I always thought this one was really neat. So it's essentially using a frosting etching technique to make your own crystal ball. And you can put in your own symbols and swirls so you have them looking through, but you still have that overall frosted effect. Love the lighting in this illustration as well. And similar to the crystal ball, you have your magic lantern, which is working in the inverse way. So you're blocking out and silhouetting your patterns here. And then we get into horticulture, how to deal with magical and mysterious plants. Because sometimes a wizard has to be brave when encountering the unknown. I also love just all the printing on the side of the various leaves, like they have been rubbed and recorded into a source book. So here we have shrunken mandrake heads. I did do this for Halloween one time. You let them kind of shrivel and wither up from the water and they make little fake shrunken heads while also making the whole place smell like apples. We learn about mandrakes and some other historically magical plants here. And then this is a great guide on making a terrarium with plants that eat things. So this is gonna be a carnivorous little terrarium here with a couple of different plant examples. And they give you all of the details to make your own. Okay. 
Here is the fairy circle. So this is a really cute idea to purposely make a little ring of flowers in your garden to see if any fairies will show up. And this is some info on a really good basic container garden. So something that would be really great for kids or great for people who don't have really any space or a backyard or anything like that. You can always start with some great uh, common ones. So they have things like Angelica, Common Thyme, Dill, Garlic, Lesser Periwinkle, Marigold, Moonflower, Rosemary, Rue. So these would be some things that would be fairly easy to grow and they do well in small containers. And then here we have more detailed information about each one so you know what's going to be safe and what it's used for along with your info. And I just love these cute little frogs everywhere. He just jumps off. This is one I did do when I was younger, build a fairy pavilion. So you're taking these little sticks and twigs, you bind them together with raffia or twine, and you're essentially making like a little area for the fairies to play. This would be a great addition to a little container garden area and something you could probably do pretty much all year long. And then we hear more about fairies here. I did make a fairy tambourine as well when I was younger. So you are looking for any kind of woody vine. We actually had a lot of grapevine in Florida. So I actually had that growing on the back of our neighbors and mine's fence. So I was just able to take it from there. Floral wire, something to wrap it around, ribbons and bells, and you have your own celebratory tambourine to call in the fairies. Then we get to magical animals, how to deal with them. So this is just a short field guide to fabulous beasts, giving you some basic information and how to pronounce them when you see them in books. Wyvern, Wyvern. And then here we get some crafting to go along with it for the wizard's apothecary. So making your own little bubbles of narwhal breath, making your own little baby unicorn horns. So no animals will be harmed in the making of your apothecary. Dragon heart strings, which they used earlier for the wand. And I thought these were cute, the little eyes of newt that you can string along a thread dragon scales from pine cones, and then you can craft yourself a little kit to keep everything in place. This is something I want to do soon, which is the toad garden castle. You're using um, some clay flower pots and some miniature clay flower pots to give him his little kingdom. It's so cute. And then of course we have to talk about the book arts because an apprentice has lots of studying to do. You can make your own secret journal. You can learn your own rune language to use so no one else will be able to read it. You can make your own ink to use and learn about some of the history of it. Of course, you can make your own scrolls for your ancient spells. And to write, you have your quill pen, your regular black ink from before, and some invisible ink. I definitely did the invisible ink and it works. You just have to make sure you're doing the instructions exactly. There's a lot of good basic historical information and scientific information in here as well. So we're taking a look at the art of astronomy. So this goes over a couple crafting projects to make your own constellation that you can have showing in your room and you learn more about the various uh, star signs. It's time to get cooking with alchemy. So here we have a bunch of magic potions. So things like dragon's blood, kraken slime, and some fizzy phantom potion all totally safe and easy to make at home. These are more like little tricks. So you have smoking phoenix ashes to make it look like you can summon fire. We have some ghostly green quicksand recommended for a 
dolls and action figures. And then we have Presto Changeo Chameleon Water that you can make change in front of their eyes. And then, great for Halloween party time, it's the art of amusement. One of the best things about being a wizard is knowing so many ways to have a good time. So we have some great party masks. A mold garden centerpiece, which I did want to try as a child, but was told no. Some Venetian glass table settings. Wizard crackers for party favors. And then a nice little spooky food cookbook. So we got bat wings, petrified tree cookies, crystal candy, which I did try to make, but it didn't work when I was younger. Pumpkin ice cream shake. And some all flavor gumdrops. And maybe at your wizard party, you can read some tea leaves and do a little divination find out the futures of your guests. You can show them your chromatrope or your magically spinning serpent. Finally, we have a farewell from the wizard and all the templates you need for any of the crafts that were mentioned before. Thanks for exploring with me today, the book of wizard craft. I hope you enjoyed this book as much as I have over all of these years. It's something that I would recommend pretty much every kid getting because it's all the Halloween magical stuff you could want in basic form in one book. That time period for publication is so interesting to me because I have seen a lot of wizarding school books or wizard books or wizard related media that came out just before Harry Potter's movies went global and just after the first Harry Potter movies went global. And it's very interesting to see what ideas stay the same, which are more generalized, what makes wizards seem more like an outcast or different from society versus wizards who try to blend in or, uh, you know, hide within a non-magical society. That's it for today's book exploration, and I'll see you in another video. Bye. Thank you.